Don't go anywhere. This is Ask an Autism Mom Live. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Ask an Autism Mom Live. I'm John Eggert of LackeyKid.com, and you can join me every Monday live on Facebook to learn tips, meet other parents, and share insights. On today's show, we'll be talking to Jason Shea, founder of Lackey Kid. When Jason and his wife found out his son Keanu was diagnosed with autism and ADHD while living in Japan, he made it his mission to ensure Keanu would one day live an independent life. He created a community and products to help other families who are going through a similar struggle. If you know someone who would like to watch the show live or that could use tips and insight, please share now or tag them in the comment section. Welcome, Jason. And I want to welcome everyone here today to our show. For those of you watching live on Facebook, listening to the podcast on iTunes or YouTube, if you want to get alerts to join us live and get questions live, you can visit lackeykid.com forward slash live. Good morning, Christy. I want to welcome everyone watching. Chris, hi. I'm so happy you made it, Chris. I knew you thought you'd have to work. Ariella and Jason, welcome to the show this morning. If you're just joining us, you are listening to Ask an Autism Mom Live, and we're talking with Jason Heisch, founder of or Shea, founder of Lackey Kid. Welcome, Jason. I can't wait to dig into the topic with you. But first, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors. Today's sponsor is actually Vila Key. Villa Key makes trip planning easier by providing a selection of autism-friendly vacation homes in the best destinations, along with helpful tools, services, and amenities. Visit lackeykid.com forward slash giveaway to enter to win an autism-friendly vacation home for three nights and Lackey Kid Sensory Travel Kit. So if you're just joining us, you're listening to Ask an Autism Mom show, and we're talking with Jason Shea, founder of Lackey Kid. So Jason, do you want to tell us, what is Lackey Kid? Yeah, sure. Uh, First of all, it's an honor to be uh, on our own show, actually. (laughs) And uh, I'm actually kind of nervous, of course. I'm not as good as being on live camera, and that's why I prefer to kind of stay off scene sometimes. But uh, just to give you a little bit of background of Okay, so this is a company that I founded over a year ago. So actually, this month is actually our one-year anniversary of Lucky Kids. So this company was founded based on the idea we I want to provide the best quality uh, sensory product to other autism and special needs family that's going through the same journey that me and my son and my wife and my family was going through when we first know about um, our son's diagnosis. And what was the exact inspiration for Lackey Kid? Um, so are you referring to the name itself? The name and obviously you were living in an area, in a place that was not a helpful to your son and you wanted to move forward and build a better life for him. Yeah, yeah, great question. So the story behind that is actually we were living in Japan back in, uh, let's see, four, three years ago. And uh, my son was two at the time. Uh, when we first got diagnosis for living in Japan, um, we went through a lot of struggle and a lot of almost in denial. I was in denial for the first, I would say, six months to a year. And uh, because to me, my son is just like another regular kid. I don't see him as being different. I don't see him having a disability. I just see him as a kid that doesn't really know how to express himself as well as other kids uh, kids in his similar age. And I just see him as a regular kid that is having a little bit of a struggle as far as social interactions. And of course he was non-verbal at the time, but to me as a father, I don't want to treat him as different. I don't want to treat him any differently and then any of our uh, my other kids so that's when we went to a lot of difficulty when we we're trying to find therapy 
because unfortunately, while we're living in Japan, even we we're actually living in Tokyo at the time. And as you can imagine, Tokyo is actually the largest and the biggest metropolitan area in the world, and also one of the most advanced country in the world. But when it comes to special need resources, when it comes to help for kids on the spectrum or any kind of special needs, Japan is one of the worst country you can be in. There's no help from the government. We couldn't get help from the school. We couldn't even get help from the private sector. When we're trying to find therapy for our son, there's only a handful, I would say less than three clinics that we can actually find in Tokyo that offer behavior therapy, that offer occupational therapy, physical therapy, and all these other therapy that our son needs for him, for him to be successful in his life. So that's why we decided to move back to the United States three years ago when we we're looking into options. And so how can we make our son to be as successful as, uh, as a human being as he can? And I think the solution for us is to provide him with the best education and the best uh, resource of different therapy. And unfortunately, unfortunately, Japan is not a country that we can find all the resource, resource at, at a time. So. so you moved back to the United States to give your son a better life and to find the quality that is lacking in other areas. That's correct. That's correct. And uh, fortunately, after we move back, uh, my son makes significant progress. And of course, it's because of the therapy we have been trying to get uh, get him. He's doing. He's still doing a lot of therapy even today. He's doing the intensive behavior therapy, ABA therapies, uh, twelve hour a week. And we are also uh, trying to find him the occupational therapy and also speech therapy that he's getting on a weekly basis. And also from the school, uh, of course, I know everyone's getting uh, just started a new school year, but uh, I will be meeting with the school teams and talking about the new IEP uh, plan. And uh, we'll have an IEP meeting with the school, trying to uh, fo uh, focus and finalize on all the help that he can get from the school as well. So. Well, I've actually had the privilege of talking to your son personally. And I know that he as well is very loving of this company. I mean, when I talk to him, he's showing me, look, that's you on TV when he finds me on our shows and the wiggle seats. That's, I think that's gotta be one of his favorite things. I see him with it a lot. Yeah. He's he in obviously in has gotten so much out of you doing this company and giving back to the community. You're showing your son so much. Yeah, thank you for that comment. Thank you. Now, where did the name Lucky Kid come from? So the name Lucky Kid is just just a play on words. So Lucky is a Hawaiian word for the English word Lucky, L-U-C-K-Y. So the why we choose a Hawaiian word is actually uh, there's another funny story behind it on how me and my wife met. Uh, me and my wife actually met in Hawaii. Uh, see, almost ten years ago when I was still in college and I was traveling abroad, uh, just traveling to uh, visit um, visit Hawaii uh, by, by myself. And she was tra traveling to Hawaii and visiting one of her friends. And we actually met at this bus stop. Believe it or not, I, I was lost at the bus stop and I decided to ask her directions. And I also got her contact information at the same time. So that's kind of how we met. And we decided to go back and get got married in Hawaii. Uh, we actually went back to the first the beach that we went uh, the first one dating to it's a uh, kailua beach at the north shore of uh, uh, Honolulu, uh north of Honolulu, and uh, that's why we decided to give all the our kids a hawaiian name and that's why i also decided to make the the brand name to be associated with a hawaiian uh, name as well so now, do you want to tell me some more about yourself? I know you're a married father of three mm -hmm. and you started this company for your son. Is there anything else that you'd like people to know about yourself? Yeah, so just a little bit um, background uh, about where I am at right now. So I started this uh, company as a kind of a side hustle, like everyone call it. and. Uh, I still have a full-time day um, day job, and uh, this is really my passion 
project and my passion business that I want to devote devote a lot of my time besides besides the regular regular work. Then I really want to create not only the best product out there, but also create a community of like-minded parents that we can support each other. And that's why we have a dedicated parent support group with Lucky Kids. And that's why we're doing the live show so we can try to provide not only the, the all the different parenting tips, but also provide and interview other experts in the field that we can get the latest information to our audience. But as far as a little bit background on myself, I was born and raised in Taiwan. I moved to United States when I was 15. I went to high school in California. I went to college, uh, went to UC Santa Barbara for college. And right after I graduated, I started a different company with a couple of my friends I met in college. I actually started a web design company. Unfortunately, that company doesn't last as well. And uh, I, I had a company for about a year or so, but um, due to some issues I have with my partner and uh, we're not getting enough business to keep that business running. So I decided to close the company and move back to Taiwan. And after, that's where I joined the uh, uh, Taiwan military because uh, in Taiwan it's mandatory for all the men to join, uh, attend at least one year of military service. So I attend the military, actually the uh, Taiwan, Taiwanese army for a year. Then after I got out of the army, that's when, I, that's when I decided to get married. And my wife actually moved to Taiwan and uh, we lived in Taiwan for like a year or so, where then she, we decided like she, she didn't speak Chinese herself. So it was a struggle for her to live in Taiwan. And uh, we decided to move to Japan where she is from and she have a lot of family in uh, lived near uh, Tokyo, Japan, and we decided to move back to Japan. And that's why I find a new job. And I was living there for four years. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the show, that's also where uh, we have our, uh, our son was actually born in Taiwan. Then we moved to Japan when he was two. And then um, he got diagnosis when he was uh, when he was two, when we were living in Japan. And th then the same story kind of continued. Then we decide and we're, we're deciding on what's the best move for our family going forward. And that's why we decided to move back to the United States three years ago. Now, I heard Lackey Kid has a lot of things coming up in the future. I'm lucky enough to be able to see some of the things coming up. Can you explain what you have planned for the future? I know there's expansion in other areas. There's new products possibly coming. Can you let us know about some of that? Yeah, definitely. So we, for 2018, we have a lot of exciting news. We're actually planning to launch three more products uh, by the end of this year. And uh, one of the biggest products we'll be launching on December 1st is actually going to be on Kickstarter. And it's, this is going back to the ongoing partnership we have with Culture City. So Culture City is a large nonprofit organization in US. And you got, if you haven't heard of Culture City, please visit their website. Their website is culturecity.org. Uh, I'm actually showing that right now, Jason. Okay. So people are attempting to show it. One moment. Yeah, so Culture City have a lot of different programs that they created to help artists and family. And they have like a toys across America, which they give out toys to the low income family who is affected by autism each year during Christmas. And even outside of Christmas, they donate a lot of the toys. And they also donate tablet to the families. Yeah, so check out their website if you want to apply for a tablet for your kids, uh, especially if your, your kids is not verbal and you couldn't afford to buy a, lab, uh, uh, a tablet or iPad. Uh, Cultural City have a program that they can give, give, you one, give you one for free. And they also have another program that they give out, uh, it's called a- uh, uh, Life box. Light box, light box. Thank you, for, thank you for doing that. So in the light box, they give out a GPS device, or I think it's, it's a Bluetooth device that connected to your phone that prevent kids from wandering. And this is another wonderful program that they, they are doing to help the artisan community. And of course, this light box is free. Which, as you are aware of, other com other company out there also offer a similar GPS device. They charge you like a hundred dollar just to buy the device and you need to pay a monthly subscription fee just to keep the device. And I don't think that, I don't think that's an approach that we should, I mean, that's why I, I would prefer to, for anyone who's interested in getting a GPS device, definitely look into Culture City's program so you don't need to pay anything out of pocket. 
And the last the last program I want to mention about culture cities, they have a huge program called Sensory Initiative Program. So what Sensory Initiative Program is, they go into NBA stadiums, baseball stadiums, football stadiums, aquariums, and zoos, and they go in to first educate the staff about sensory processing disorders, and they also provide them with sensory bags, and they also provide them to set up a sensory room. So I guess if for the audience who doesn't understand uh, autism and sensory processing disorder, sensory, sensing, uh, sensory processing disorder is one of the most common uh, things with kids on the spectrum. So when you have a, when you, your kids on the spectrum, they usually have different sens sensory issues. When I talk about sensory issue that, uh, that apply to anything when they feel overwhelmed with too much sound, too much uh, light, or just too much outside stimulations overall. So as you can imagine in, uh, NBA environment, it's going to be really loud and a lot of noise, a lot of light. So what Culture City did, does is they provide the sensory bag for free, of course, and uh, for the for the for the family who's attending the NBA game, they can check out the the bag before the game start. And inside the bag, there's a couple of different items to help with the sensory needs. So they provide a a, a sensory like toys, like different fidgeting toys. They also provide a noise can, uh, canceling headphones, and they also provide a weighted lap pad. So inside the bag, that's all the tool that uh, the kids can get to help them to uh, still watch the NBA game without being overwhelmed. And also the other wonderful thing they does is they'll educate the staff about the sensory need that those family will encounter. And they also go into the stadium and go to the different menu venues and create a sensory room, which is like a choir room where the kids can go to if they still feel overwhelmed after using all the tool that was included in the sensory bag. So going back to our partnership with Culture City, what we're actually creating is we are creating an upgraded version of the weighted lab pad that is going to be writable and also wipeable. So in the traditional weighted lab pad, well, usually they use uh, regular fabrics that is really hard to disinfect. So when, for what we're trying to do here with Culture City, they are, they are providing all this thing for free and it's going to be reused over and over again. So we need to figure out a way to disinfect the weighted lab pad without putting it into a washer and dryer every single time. So that's what we're developing right now. We're still in the prototyping phase and uh, as far as the project deadline goes, we are projecting it to launch our Kickstarter campaign in on December 1st. And we should have some of our prototype coming back by early November right now. Now, do you want to tell me, I know your passion is to help other families, but I know that when you were living in Asia, it was harder because there was such a lack of support and everything. Do you plan on expanding into any Asian areas or do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. So that's actually one of my long-term vision for the company because I know we, are, we have been doing a lot of awesome content for the audience here in US, but long-term is my, my passion because I'm from Asia myself, I'm from Taiwan and my wife's from Japan. And I know most of the Asia countries doesn't have all the resources that we have in US and I want to bring the resources, the product, the, the videos, and also what Culture City is doing into Japan. Um, so Japan is actually one of the first countries we're looking into right now as far as expanding the product and the services that we're offering in the United States. And it's going to be a very tricky market to tackle, into, so to speak, because first of all, you need to understand Japanese culture is they don't like to talk about disability openly. And oftentimes parents will actually hide the fact that even if they got a diagnosis, they don't want to talk about it openly. Like here we in the US where it's very open and people like to talk about autism awareness and they will wear t-shirts, they will, they will do anything to promote autism awareness. Whereas in a lot of Asian countries like Japan, it's almost the opposite. People don't want to talk about autism. People don't want to be put on a label to themselves because they, they they care about how other people look at themselves and their family so much. They don't want to be labeled. 
So it's, it's in that way, it's very different than US as far as the mentality on how people approach a disability like autism, because autism is an invisible disability, which make it even harder for people in Japan, because when it's invisible, it's hard to explain but to other people who you're communicating with. Even in US, we I run into this problem with my son sometimes when we are in public, when people doesn't understand when he have a meltdown, then you need to explain to the people that like I have some really mean people talking to, to, to us and saying that you should know how to discipline your kid better. I have people to tell that tell that to us, but People don't understand. It's not about uh, disciplining your kids. It's about that just the way they are. I mean, you couldn't really discipline them into a different people. You know, that's not how the way things work when you, when you have kids on the spectrum. So with that difficulty, I think Japan is even going to be a harder market for us to get into. But I think once we figure out the thing that we can target it and help the families in Japan, I think is huge. That's a huge need because there's no other company, there's no nonprofit organization in Japan. Like in the US, we have a lot of nonprofit, including Culture City. We also have Artisan Speak, which is another huge nonprofit. And in US, none of those exist. So I have been talking uh, with uh, Julian, the founder of Culture City, on an ongoing basis about how we can bring out my company and also his organization into Asia. And that's something we have been working uh, diligently in the background as far as trying to figure out how to do that and how to provide the product and the services to those families that are engaging. And what are the different ways that you personally right now in Lackey Kids supports different autism families? Yeah, so one of our main, main focus is keep on developing new product that is going to help. So we have, a, we have five main products, like you always show in the live show a couple of times, but we have a main set of uh, product line that's geared toward a classroom that we call an active sitting uh, product. We have a fidget band that kids can use in the classroom. We also have Wego C that kids can, that can help the kids in the classroom environment. And we also have a couple of other therapeutic product, like our weighted product that's going to help the kids as far as when they have sensory issues, they can bring out some of our product when they are traveling or that when they are just in the car. And uh, that's one of the main way we're trying to help the family by providing with the product they need. On top of that, we're also trying to provide educational pieces. That's like the, the wonderful live show that you have been doing for the past months. We're trying to talk, we are trying to cover all the different topics that an autism family could potentially run into by doing the live show. And on the on actually starting this month, we're actually planning to repurpose our live show into different format that's including YouTube videos, blog posts, and potentially podcasts. So for the family who is interested in learning more about our content, people can use different media because not everyone have time to watch a 30 minute video on Facebook. And some people will prefer to listen to a podcast while they are driving or while they are exercising or while they are just doing tour around the house. So we are, we are trying to provide the same quality content in different format. So for the family who want to learn more, they can choose and uh, choose and pick the best format that's going to suit to their lifestyle. And I know that you have a Facebook group, which you and I actively run together, where we support different families. Um, feel free to join our Facebook group if you have not already. And I know that we also do this live show, which thankfully your company has so kindly put on for us. Now, I want to go to the viewers. And if you have any questions, please type them in the comments section. I will see them. And Jason, I just want to let you know that we have a regular viewer, Melissa, who wanted to say thank you for all that you have done and the support that you offer all of the families. There's actually quite a few comments similar to that today saying that they love you and that they love everything you have done for autism families. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. I think that that's the mission behind the company is it's about creating a community that people can really help each other. Because when I first got that, I mean, my son first got diagnosis, we don't get any help when 
living in Japan. It's a very lonely journey. Like we we're talking to a lot of different people in like we, we went to like uh, the city halls and try to find resources, but it's just not a lot of help when I was living in Japan. So the, it, it is it is my honor to be able to serve other family who's going through the same struggle as ours. And I just want to say to the mom that's saying that you're considering a wiggle seat, you will not regret it. Trust me. Jason, I have from Chris, how old is your son? Oh, he's seven right now. See, so he's actually starting in second grade next year. So tomorrow is going to be his first day of school for the, in the new class. So we'll see how he how he reacts to the new environment. As, as you, can, you know, most kids on the spectrum sometimes struggle when they are put into a new environment with new friends, new teachers, and everything. The first week is always a struggle, but he'll get used to it and do well. Yeah, he's doing a lot better, definitely. Sometimes I almost, because he's really talkative right now, sometimes I feel like he almost talked too much. It's like the opposite of the spectrum, where in the beginning he was, he was nonverbal, then we all we all always worry about like how can we make him speak. Now it's like we always worry, worry about how can we make him ask less questions. So, <laughs> so it's really I understand. of the different spectrum. So. But I think in, in Riley's at the same stage in life where she's questioning everything. And it's like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same as my son, similar. I laugh because four years ago, she was completely nonverbal. <laughs> so now it's a total opposite of the spectrum and it's hilarious. Yeah, very interesting how the growth the, the, the growth of the kids and how they can evolve as far as, far as the day in the autism journey. So. Now, Melinda wants you to know that your son is a blessing that spread the blessing to other families thanks to the vision that you had all because of your son. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I would say I won't be living in U.S. if it wasn't for my son and my son's diagnosis, and I won't start even started this company uh, without my son. So he's definitely my huge uh, inspiration. And I see Chris is asking, is my kids bilingual? Yes, they are. They speak Japanese and English. And personally, I'm trilingual myself. I speak Chinese, Japanese, and English, but I haven't had the chance to teach them Chinese yet. So something you know, maybe to consider. <laughs> so. And I have a question myself personally. How does your son, how was it teaching him? Because I know he was nonverbal. How was it teaching him language and then teaching him two different languages? Right now, I think we didn't really make it a special treatment. So the way we do it at home is just when my kids is talking to my wife, they speak in Japanese. When they talk to me, they speak in English. And that's kind of the way we, we kind of set, uh, separated. And since all the school is using English in the school, so that's pretty natural. And they kind of, they know when they talk to a certain per person, they use a different language. So. Well, I want to thank you, Jason, for coming live with us today and talking to us. And unfortunately, it is that time of day that we wrap up the show. But again, thank you, Jason, and thanks, everyone, for joining us today. I'm Jen Eggert, and you can join me live every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern for more parenting tips. Remember, you can always join our parent support group at lackeykid.com forward slash group until next time everyone have a great week remember i will be live tomorrow with another interview that one's exciting and that does come with a special announcement so please try and cat tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m eastern with our special guest alice and i just want to let you know i thank you all i appreciate everyone coming and spending their holiday with us today so have a good day, and don't forget, every kid brings good luck. Thank you, and everyone have a good day. Bye, everyone. Thank you.